Welcome, welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hey, hey, everybody! Welcome in to episode forty-six. Awesome to be back with you guys. Me and my family just recently got back from vacation in Orange Beach, Alabama. It was fun. It was not relaxing because we took our two daughters, my wife and I did. So it was anything but relaxing, uh, taking two little ones, uh, two, two and, and seven months to a beach. But we had a really good time, Lit a lot, made a lot of great memories, got a little sun, and I am back in action now. And I'm real excited to bring you this episode this week because I am bringing in a guest who is a close friend, mentor, slash colleague, and is also my competition but we're all about coopetition, and that's David Blackman. For those of you who have been in the Divi arena for any amount of time, you probably know him because he is the owner of a company called Aspen Grove Studios, and his partner, Corey Jenkins, is is also a colleague of mine, and we're on Divi Chat together, which is a podcast for Divi. David also runs Divi.Space, where they have child themes and plugins and courses and resources for Divi. He's also the host, co-host of a podcast called WP The Podcast, which is awesome. Highly recommend listening to that alongside this one. And he also is a partner in a site called WP Gears with my buddy Tim Streifler of Divi Life. And they have courses there as well. So I say all that to say you probably know David if you've been in the Divi community for a while. But we are going to focus in this episode on how to get higher paying clients. This is a hot topic right now with a lot of my students when we're talking about raising rates, getting not only better clients, but clients that are going to pay more. And as you'll find out in this episode, a couple of different paths on how to do this. You can either attract really good clients that have bigger budgets, or you can also work with the B and C type clients or mom and pa shops, offer them more value, build that relationship, and then you can learn how to eventually make them a higher paying client. So I'm really excited for you guys to hear me and David's experience in our businesses with getting higher pay, paying and higher value and higher level clients. I think this is gonna be super beneficial for you. One thing I wanna say on the outset of this is I don't want you to feel intimidated if you're just starting out when you hear this episode, because we're going to talk real numbers here, you're going to find out some of my highest jobs that I've landed. And you're also going to hear David's, which <laughs> David's got one on me because his highest uh, paying job to date is 10x what mine is. Uh, but I don't want you to be intimidated by that. I want this episode to be inspiring to you because uh, sky's the limit. There are so many options for making really good money in web design. You also don't have to take our exact paths. You'll find out that David and I each have our own separate and different recurring revenue sources in and around our web design agencies. Uh, and you don't have to take that same path. You can do what works for you. So I'm really excited to hear how this episode helps you out. Now, I talk about how to raise your rates and getting better clients in my web design business course, which is what this episode is brought to you by. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to share a quick uh, testimonial from a student in my business course. And this comes to you uh, from Leo Reese Evans, who is a new web design student of mine. He actually left a comment, left this comment on one of my Facebook posts. And we've been working at helping him get his rates up there and, and to just charge more and to get better high paying clients. And this is what he said. He said, I raised my rates by 700% to see what would happen. I've landed two clients this month that are almost 10x what I was charging, signing up two people for my maintenance plan both, and they're both A-plus clients for life. Boom. And he says, up your rates, people. See what happens. For me, it has attracted people that value my services, and they're willing to invest. It's making me work better, and it's given me so much more confidence that has made my job exciting. Leo, awesome, man. That is why I do this. That is what I love to hear. And if you want results like Leo's getting, I do have my web design business course that's out now and available for you to join. And I can help you raise your rates and take your business to a whole nother level. 
and to get instant results like Leo, because Leo just joined my course last month. So you can get results very quick and I'm excited to help you do that. We can do that through my web design business course. All right, guys, well, without further ado, enjoy my chat with David Blackman on how to land higher paying clients. I'm very excited to hear how this one helps you out. If you get pumped, if you get excited, and this helps you in your business, please let me know. You can drop a comment on the show notes for this episode at joshhall.co slash 046. Let me know how it goes. Enjoy. David, welcome to the show, man. Really, really awesome to have you on, brother. Thanks, Josh. Glad to be here. I'm a little surprised. It's probably my fault that it's taken 46 episodes to get you on. Uh, we're close colleagues. We're coopetition in a lot of ways, but you've been uh, a friend of mine and truly a mentor in, in my journey so far, man. So before we even get started, I just want to say thank you uh, for being a mentor of mine and an encourager. And I'm excited to talk about some pricing with you, man. I'm excited as well. I thought you were saving me for the 100th episode, the centennial. <laughs> and I'm just playing it. I'm glad to be here, Josh. I'm, I'm looking forward to the chat. Yeah. So we're going to talk about a subject that a lot of my students are curious about, rightfully so. And I'm sure a lot of yours are as well uh, with your and Tim's Divi business expert course. And that's how to get higher paying clients. Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about raising your rates and a lot of other kind of subcategories that lead into that. But I think the idea of getting a high paying client is interesting and needed. Uh, and what's been interesting for me is that I've had experience with getting just A plus clients, but then also getting clients that weren't so great in the early days, but through value, through trust, and through a good relationship, they turned in to really good high paying clients. And I'm not sure if, uh, if you, you experience the same, but I'm really excited to talk about this topic. I figured a great place to start would be to... Uh, well, first of all, where are you at right now? And what's your role with Aspen Grove Studios? Because you're involved in a, quite a few different businesses, but I'd love to kind of focus on Aspen Grove. Um, yeah, where are you and what do you do with Aspen Grove right now? All right. Currently, I am in the Pacific Northwest in Ashland, Oregon. When the pandemic hit, COVID-19, I had made a decision. I had been toying with the idea of renting a home, kind of settling back down. I've been a digital nomad for the last five years, traveling full-time in an RV um, since 2015. Absolutely loved it. You know, one of the benefits of, of being an entrepreneur and being able to work from anywhere, I obviously made a decision to do that. So earlier part of this year, I had been toying with the idea of, of just finding a home base. And last summer, I spent quite a bit of time here in the Pacific Northwest. I fell in love. Um, and I decided to rent a home here. So I came to Ashland, Oregon, which is where I'm at currently and signed a six month lease on a house the week that everything went on lockdown. <laughs> oh, wow. So I came up here by myself and pretty much was quarantined by myself in this new home. But I'm fortunate in that it was a, a nice home. It was it's right in the mountains, so I could I can go hiking and walking, and nature's right out my door, and um, it's been really, really incredible. So I'm a little great. surprised you didn't end up back down south, man. Before we went live, we were just chatting that my, me and my family we just got back from Orange Beach, Alabama, which is a great spot uh, down in Gulf Shores and in the Gulf. I'm surprised you didn't end up there, man. No, I'm a mountain guy, and that's one thing that I've learned about myself. Um, I'm from Louisiana, so I've lived in the South the majority of my life. And guess what, Josh? It's hot down there. I it's mean, toasty. <laughs> it's, it's toasty. Like, it's really hot. If you just came from the coast in July, you you know that that's where I grew up. I grew up just you know probably three four hours from where you were, um, in southern Louisiana, and I grew up twenty minutes from the coast. So. I mean, it's hot and humid and you can I'm, walk out and get a drink. You can just drink the yeah, air. It's so humid. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm done with that. I want cool. <laughs> I want moderate temperatures. Give me the highs in the seventies and you know, I don't need to swim and suntan and do all that stuff. I'm, I'm 52. So uh, I would rather sit on the porch, drink some coffee, work from the porch or the deck or, you know, be outside in some shape, form or fashion, but not dripping wet. With sweat <laughs> gotcha. And, and, 
Yeah. Yeah, we're I'm I'm a beach guy. My my wife is a beach gal. My girls loved love being in the water. So we yeah. we were talking before we went live. We're we're gonna try to make our way to the beach at some point here in our uh, as our bucket list item. But but yeah, man, I you know it's it's interesting because like I said, we've been colleagues for a while. Uh, and then you have a lot going on, but again, I wanted to focus on Aspen Grove and your services with that. So what, uh, what is your role technically with Aspen Grove? Are you doing all the sales? Are you the primary owner? What's that look like currently for you? Well, Aspen Grove studios, I'm the CEO, um, and I'm a co-founder. Uh, my partner and I, Corey Jenkins started Aspen Grove studios in 2015. Um, you know, Oddly enough, you know, we were running our own individual client services agencies and, um, and we wanted to, as you know, we're, we're pretty big in the Divi community. We love Divi and, uh, Divi is the primary WordPress theme that we use for all of our builds for clients as well, but we started creating products for it with Aspen Grove Studios. So Aspen Grove Studios actually started as our product company collaboration. And after about four or five months of working together, we realized that we worked really well together. So we decided to go ahead and combine our existing businesses and just kind of morph it all into Aspen Grove Studios. So I owned Davcom Digital. He had Timber Ridge Media, two individual client services businesses. He was based in Prescott, Arizona. I was based in Scott, Louisiana, Lafayette, Louisiana. And we had our clients in that local area. And um, after working together, you know, Corey and I realized that we just, we, we, we worked really well together. He was more of the tech side of things. I was more sales and marketing side of things. We, we kind of balanced each other out because I am probably the least <laughs> technical guy in the company. Uh, I do tend to focus on the sales and the marketing and, and that kind of stuff. And, um, but that's actually how Aspen Grove Studio started. And then we rolled everything into Aspen Grove Studio. So it's the parent company of a couple of other companies that we've acquired over the last um, couple of years. Divi.Space, which is our Divi product company. Uh, Potent Plugins was an acquisition. Uh, it was a WordPress plugin development company, primarily focusing on WooCommerce extensions and plugins. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that company was started by our lead back end developer, Jonathan Hall, who works full time and only with us now. Um, and we acquired that company as well. So it was more of a talent acquisition than, you know, hey, I want to looking for a WordPress company to buy and it just it just worked out. So that's gotcha. the history now, short version. Yeah, that's great. I, I and I know I, I think what's cool, really cool about that situation, I just experienced this as well with selling in transit and merging uh, with Eric, my CEO, and our two businesses, we kind of merged them together. It's pretty incredible to have clients from two different companies, two different yeah. viewpoints, and then you can just offer all kinds of services and start at a, right. a really cool, you can start a new chapter with that. And yeah. on that note, what did your guys' services look like when you merged the two? Were you just doing website design or were you doing maintenance, hosting, and other services as well? We were doing um, website design and we were doing maintenance service agreements. We call them service agreements. I learned a really quick lesson early on. You know, I called them maintenance agreements and, and I had a client call me up, wanted something fixed on their site. And I was like, well, that's not really covered in what we're what you're paying for. And they're like, well, I have a maintenance agreement. No, you're maintaining my, and I'm like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the name of that. You know, let's, okay. let's call it a service agreement. So um, we did offer service agreements, which, you know, you're probably, you probably, a lot of people probably call them maintenance agreements as well. Which website is, you know, care plans. I know website really care popular. plans, yeah. updates, you know, backup security, kind of the more technical, super important things. We had that. My my initial thoughts, even before Corey and I partnered up with Aspen Grove Studios, my goal was to get a hundred service agreement clients, you know, and start the year off with a minimum of a six figure salary, just on those alone, without even getting before I got my first web design client, because I wanted gotcha. recurring revenue uh, long before you know. I guess it was a hugely popular thing. I just I knew I didn't. You know, as a as a pretty good salesperson, you know, you're always having to when you're in client services, you know, you're always having to 
get the next client, get the next client, get the next client. And I wanted to just kind of figure out what, what, what can, how can I lessen that to where there's not so much pressure on getting the next client and, and increasing revenue and stuff. So we offered service agreements and web design. That was primarily the two things, areas that we focused in. Gotcha. Initially. Yeah. And what, if you don't mind, which as we, we talked about before we went live, one reason I wanted to talk about this topic with you, David, is because you are much like I am in being that you're very real, transparent, and you're an open book. And I think that's extremely valuable for this type of topic rather than somebody who's too vague saying like, oh, it was an expensive website. Well, what does expensive mean? Is that like a thousand or is that like 50,000? You know, it's it's huge. So what did your guys' price points look like? Did you have like an average bill, could you say, back in those days in the 2015, yeah. 16 days? Yeah, absolutely. We... um we stayed and focused primarily on small businesses at that time. You know, that's kind of was, was our, both of our kind of our comfort zone and our niche. Um, you know, we actually, when we partnered, we brought each other up. I'm going to say, you know, it, we gave each other the confidence and the courage to go after bigger projects and charge more money and stuff, which mm, we'll ultimately talk good. about here. But, um, you know, we primarily stayed between the three to five thousand dollar range for a website, which was typically your small businesses, brochure type kind of sites that, you know, don't have a tremendous amount of functionality. Um, we actually really quickly evolved into um, an e-commerce company, you know, because we had built our own e-commerce store for our product business, you know, for our Divi plugins and child themes. And we started attracting customers who needed e-commerce websites. So right. right there, you go from a three to five thousand dollar to a pretty significant jump when you're when yeah. you're doing e-commerce websites. Five to ten so, to fifteen on average. Oh, easily, with e yeah, we, yeah, absolutely, yeah. That's interesting. It, I experienced the same type of thing when I launched. I did two e-commerce sites before I launched JoshHall.co, and I learned like that's when I really learned about WooCommerce in depth and in detail was just doing it myself and just right. learning about all the ins and outs and customizing it. And then once I did that, same thing. I felt much more confident to take on more e-commerce sites. And that's a huge yeah. aspect of what we're doing yeah. now too. Yeah. So that Absolutely. makes sense. I mean, that, I mean, that's kind of, I, I, the more people I talk to, the three to five range is standard and pretty average with a professional agency. If yeah. If it's a solo printer who's starting out, you know, it's more along the 1,000 to 1,500, but I'm a big proponent, and I'm sure you are as well, an encourager of get your rates up now. Just <laughs> raise them right now. Yeah. Even if you don't think you're valuable enough, that's why I'm a course creator. That's why you're a course creator, David. Yeah. We have offered what we've learned so you could go yeah. through it and you can pay it back and get a massive ROI right now. Raise your rates right now. That's the big lesson. Uh, yeah. And what, one thing I've found is that you don't have to do it a lot. You don't have to go from charging a thousand to charging five thousand. But when I first started, when I was in that range at the thousand to fifteen hundred, first of all, it was a mindset thing for me, and I just started doing it a little bit. I raised it in what I call the the same price bucket. So instead of a thousand, I started charging fifteen hundred. And then once I realized that, wow, all those people are going to pay fifteen hundred, then I raised it to two grand. Then I did twenty five hundred. And then all the people that were paying a thousand were now paying double on average what they did. And then I just learned to add more value, to learn more about that, get better at sales, get better at communication. And then boom, the average is thirty five hundred. And that was how I scaled and did a, a six figure salary for the business repeatedly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Cool. And it yeah, sounds we, like uh, you guys were in the same, right? Would, would you say that's, you know, it sounds like yeah. with you and Corey mixing together, you probably did a lot quicker, but um, yeah, we it was an interesting point that you said it gave you the confidence to do that. Yeah, well, the both of us, you know, him having the technical background and, you know, when I was starting and was a solopreneur, yes, I could build WordPress websites with a theme and stuff, but I wasn't a, a, um, a developer. I didn't, you know, I was learning CSS. I knew some basic HTML, but I, I knew nothing about PHP, you know, JavaScript, jQuery, all of these languages that you really need to know if you're going to be a, a web developer, if you're going to design and build, you know, successful, com high converting websites for clients. And that wasn't my wheelhouse. My wheelhouse was selling. I could easily go out and, and find clients, you know, um, but, but having Corey there kind of, 
you know, his, his background with his technical expertise, which, you know, we could tackle some, some more technical projects and stuff gave me a lot more confidence and stuff to raise our rates and stuff. And uh, yeah. I'll tell you a funny story. It's kind of relates, you know, um, I, I don't really, I wish I could tell your audience that, Hey, this was the plan that I mapped out and we had a goal and we wanted to make, you know, X number of dollars per website and stuff. But a lot of the stuff that happened for us and our company happened organically. And oddly enough, it happened directly as a result of starting our product company, you mm -hmm. know? So once I started to realize the, the true value of what it, what it was that I could bring to a client because I had started building revenue online. That was totally, it was the, you know, just like my clients, they wanted to sell their products online and stuff. And when I started selling products online, you know, our first month we made $367 and I was like, Hey man, we just got an extra 300 bucks this month. This is yeah. awesome. Corey and I were like self high five, you know, cause we're remote working and, um, you know, you know, and we've built that up now to, you know, I mean, it's six figures a month, you know, and, you know, so having that confidence of, of taking a company that's very similar to client services, which is what they want to do mm -hmm. and having the experience of building that up really gave me the confidence and the understanding of, whoa the value of really what a web developer and a web designer brings to the table for these businesses. Yeah. So, and it, Cause it's not just the design. It's a, I'm sure we'll talk about some additional services as oh, well yeah. with like email marketing and lead generation inbound, inbound Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, that's what we're doing with in transit. Now, everything that I've learned with courses and email marketing and everything that I'm right. doing, we're absolutely transferring that over to the team, you know, that yeah, we're implying. It's huge. So, and I was curious, like, I think it's a great point. You know, your average price point makes a makes total sense. Makes even more sense that once you got into e-commerce, it really started expanding yeah. from a price point because again, you're, you know, you shouldn't be charging those 3 to 5,000 for e-commerce sites unless it's a right. fairly simple store because there's so many complexities to it. Um, one of the questions I had was in those early days like so your price points around there, did you find that your price points jumped? After you guys kind of hit that next level, did it become an average of let's say four thousand to an average of like seven, eight thousand? Yeah, oh, absolutely. or was it really yeah. all all across the board? Well, I mean, initially in that first probably year of us partnering, it really was kind of all over the board and stuff. Um, however, what we did do is we set some some minimums. You know, we realized that you know, yes, dealing with the small businesses as a joint venture and having a team behind us, as opposed to Corey building websites, me building websites over here with maybe one person helping us. We now all of a sudden had, a, a, you know, a couple of staff members and, a, and us, which kind of broadened our team and stuff. Um, you know, we, we put a, a minimum on any site that we, we, we would work on because what we found yeah. was that those smaller clients, a lot of them were, you know, they didn't understand the value of, and you had to educate them a lot of really what you were doing for them. And it mm -hmm. were just harder to work with, you know? So we yeah. made a conscious decision like, Hey, the cheap, the cheap clients are always the worst. If they, yeah. if they nick, yeah. if they haggle you for a pricing, you know, it's just going to be a terrible experience. I've, yeah. I've said it on the podcast a hundred times, but you do often have to take whatever you can get in the beginning. But as soon as you're at a place where you realize you don't need to do that yeah. immediately set your minimum, you can explain yeah. the value online. People will get it. Uh, you're not going to get everybody to understand the value. There will, there will always be somebody who wants the cheapest possible and you just don't want those clients you do not yeah, want those clients run run <laughs> run, run run from them and you know i know um <laughs> i i preach this in my business course but i'm a big proponent of if you're going to have ranges or packages just say starting at because you don't yeah. want to lock yourself into let's say a twenty five hundred dollar website uh, because if you say that then people are gonna be like well why did you come back with thirty five hundred when you said this package is twenty five hundred well Maybe they had some additions that they wanted to make. Maybe they have a team that wants to manage the site. 
So right. little little lesson, word of the wise, put your pricing as starting at ranges because then right. it gives you the freedom to expand on that. That was a simple way that I employed that. I was like, why the heck didn't I think about that? You know, right. years ago, I caused myself so many problems and so much pain just by right. having to talk people like, well, you know, there's more to this than that package that we offer kind of thing. Yeah, I think I I just started, got to a point when we, once we set that minimum was just, I was very transparent, open and upfront. If I knew that this was a small business and they approached us to build them a website, I let them know immediately, hey, look, anything we build, even if it's a one page website, our minimum is this. What was that, that minimum back it then? It was 3,500 at the time. Okay. Know? Ours, so, yeah, I just, we, we're probably going to change it, but for the past two years, I've been at 2,497, which is our minimum, yeah. which would which would include a landing page or it would be up to like a five page brochure style site. Yeah, and, yeah. and you'd be surprised. You think, oh my God, that's expensive. How can I justify this small business is coming to me and all they want is a one page website or something. And I, I just look at them and I tell them, I was like, hey, I respect your, you know, we may not be the best company for you. Our minimum is $3,500. However, you know, this is what we bring to the table. This is what we can offer you and, yes. and let them make their decision. We, we let them know right out of the gates and depending on their response to that minimum price is going to determine and dictate how easy or not easy this client's going to be. That's it right there. You so, just said it. And I think that's a big important thing for most designers to remember is that when you're talking to clients, don't just tell them, well, we start at 2,500 and then stop the conversation. You have, you can say that, but that's the start of the conversation into the value. And here's right. why. And one thing I learned to explain to clients is that rightfully so, an average small business is going to look at a price tag of 2,500 to five grand and be like, well, what the heck? Why? I could go to Wix and build my own site for that. Well, yeah. If they value their time, they're going to realize that's not the best way to go. But the big thing is, one thing that I found is I ask about their business and I don't need to know exact numbers, but I just put theoreticals out there. Like, let's say you're working with an automotive shop and they want a website. It's going to be, you know, maybe an average type of website with a few different pages, but then maybe five services pages that you'll build out for SEO. Well, 2,500 is is low on that. But even at that, even if you started at 2,500, they might say, well, why would it be 2,500? I can get a site done for less than 500 to do it myself on one of those. And I explained to them, listen, the value is here to bring in clients over and over and over and over again for you. And in this case, I would say something like, let's say an automotive client or automotive place. Let's say their average customer is on the low end, 500 a year. Oil changes, a, a car, you know, some maintenance and stuff like that. Let's say on average, their customer pays 500 a year. Well, in that case, it's only gonna take five conversions for that website to pay the website off, and then it's yeah. all profit for them from there. Um, that's one useful thing that I helped that made clients go, oh, okay, I, I see. And, and there's, you know, you gotta tread lightly doing it that way. Um, but that was just something that worked for me to help explain the value to clients. Like, yeah. oh, okay, that makes sense. Like if it's converting more, yeah, it's going to make up for it. And then you've got that website as a 24 seven salesman for you for years. Yeah. I, I think kind of what we're talking about and I kind of had a, you know, when you told me the topic that you wanted to cover and stuff, I, I kind of made an outline of, of, you know, what, what makes, you know, what's it going to take for, you know, someone to, you know, get where they're at, increase their prices, go after those higher paying clients and stuff. And I think kind of what we're talking about, at least on my first bullet point, we might be here all afternoon if we take this long getting to the rest of them, but I'm okay with that, Josh. <laughs> I'm all like right, man, talk. let's do it. I know I, you <laughs> know, I like a good, good yeah. long form conversation. I hate yeah. half an hour rust podcast. So, yeah. So is finding the sweet spot, you know, I think mm -hmm. that's going to be really, really important for, you know, where you're at. And that's, that's what we're kind of talking about. That's what Corey and I were figuring out in the early days, you know, finding our sweet spot, setting our minimum, <laughs> realizing that, you know what, here's what we offer. Here's the value. You know, we want to start here and this is kind of where we want to focus our energies and stuff. And what now, that did was it just kind of cut down on a lot of the riffraff that were coming in that yes. were wasting our time. You know, Yeah. So. Wasting your time. It can be extremely costly. Now, without getting into those weed out systems and processes, those funnels, right. was your sweet spot with certain industries or was it just a type of personality or type of client type of project? 
Yeah, it was not, uh, we did not niche. So, um, you know, we took on all forms of clients, which maybe was a mistake. You know, I know I have a lot of people that, that do niche and, and focus on a specific type of client. We didn't do that. Same here. Um, yeah. We took like, you know, cause we started to get clients because of the product business and, and, and how Divi was growing and stuff and how big the community started getting. We started getting clients from all over the world. So whereas like 99% of our clients initially came from Lafayette, Louisiana, Prescott, Arizona, you know, our localized area to where, you know, 100% of our clients now are global. You know, I mean, we don't, we're not, you know, stuck in, in just one little area and stuff. So, um, we've, you know, built e-commerce websites. We could easily focused on e-commerce and made that our niche. We didn't, um, you know, we've built membership sites. We've built countless, I can't even tell you how many brochure websites we've built. Um, you know, the funny thing about it is, is that, you know, on aspengrowstudios.com, we have a very small portfolio of, of clients that we did that we put on there eh, about a year ago or so because we're, we were doing a redesign, but we don't even showcase, you know, a lot of our work that we've done, um, a lot of the clients that we have and stuff. And honestly, we don't aggressively go after, you know, web builds for clients. We're very selective today. And I, I feel real fortunate that we're in that position. But that's that's our reality, um, which, which is probably another talk for another day. How and it's, can you do it is, that? It's different, too. Like, I, I got that way, too, over the past two years when my courses went and, and yeah. then it's been growing as I had to be more selective. Now, with this new pivot with my business within transit, with, you know, merging with, with Eric as our CEO, now we're actually able to take on more and expand our services and have, have different types of clients as well. Um, but yeah, you do. It, it's interesting. You do get to a point where you only have so much time and so many hours yeah. in the day. So you're going to have to raise your rates in that regard. You're going to have to be a little more selective. Now, the cool thing about the average web designer and their agency is they're probably not going to have their own Divi shop. You know, yeah, the average one right. will. Product Some will. Business, like, yeah. If you and Corey didn't have Divi space, shoot, you I mean, you could have taken Aspen Grove Studios to a whole new level. But that's the point. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like. Right. You don't have, you can do whatever the heck you want, which is what I love about web design. If you, I, I was actually just doing a consulting call with one of my students a while ago, uh, and she's in uh, Kansas, shout out Tammy, and uh, she was a part of like a dog training niche. And we talked about having her web design business focus on anybody, if, if an automotive place or a salon wants to work with her, awesome, don't limit yourself there, but can also have a whole segment of just niche websites for this dog grooming type of business and have templates. And it can be a really cool way to add uh, a word that I really enjoyed using recently, which is synergy. So for you guys, the stuff you learn in your web design business, uh, Aspen Grove, and what you and Corey brought to the table was a great starting point and foundation for Divi Space with child themes and plugins and answered all the needs. And that's what I found. Like, that's what my courses are. My courses are just a collection of everything I've learned the hard way in my experience over the past decade. And there's a lot of ways you can use your experience to build other things, whether whether it's plugins or child themes with Divi, or if you don't want to go that route, if you want to have certain uh, niche type of offerings for landing pages or templates, sky's the limit. You can do anything yeah. you want with that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is kind of an open, you know, there's so many directions that a web designer could could go in, you know, um, from building websites for clients to 100% maintenance and service agreement type kind of clients. I've got a good friend of mine, Jill Sessa at Ultimate WP Help. You know, she 100% of her business is, you know, maintaining clients' websites. Um, mm, yeah. You know, you can also go into courses, you can productize with plugins and themes. You can do inbound marketing, which is huge. You want to go after the really big dollars. You, you go after the inbound marketing clients where you're, where you're handling all of their, their funnels and their sales and their, their leads. And, and, you know, you're, you're running their ads, their paid ads, uh, their email acquisition, their user acquisition, where you're setting up, you know, sequences and you're doing the whole enchilada inbound marketing is where the real, you know, kind of rubber hits the road and stuff. And, um, that's where the really high dollar, however, you know, you're going to have to find clients that 
can justify that expense, that you can help grow. Um, it's a totally different caliber of client that you're going after and stuff. So great segue to the next question I was going to ask you, David, those clients, the high caliber, a plus clients, mm -hmm. big question of the day for you. Well, maybe not the biggest question of the day. I have another <laughs> biggest question of the day. Uh, All right. do, like do you, <laughs> do you search and keep an eye out for a plus clients or do you funnel, you know, can you tell that you, you have an a plus client at the start of one? Or do you try to turn maybe B or C clients into A clients? Uh, it's going to be, the answer is both. Um, absolutely, it's going to be both. So um, I do think it, it is harder to transition a smaller business and to help them understand the value of spending as much money as it's going to take to go into an inbound marketing campaign, for example. Um, as opposed to someone who's already got a budget, who already understands the value of, of advertising, you know, they've already got allocated dollars sp set specifically for growing their business. You know, I'm going to allocate a hundred thousand dollars this year for increasing revenue and it's going into advertising and marketing, you know, as opposed to a, a mom and pop who may be used to doing radio spots and, um, you know, maybe even some local television ads. You know, but when you get into trying to help them understand really what you, you can do for them um, from an inbound marketing standpoint, you know, they, it's, it's a little bit harder of a sale. So, you know, there's, there's both that you can do. We don't focus on one or the other. It just kind of depends because we are very selective on the clients that we take today, um, depending on which ones come in and, and all of them are, um, you know, they find us. We don't really go out and find them much anymore. They're referrals. They're, they're, they found us on Google. Uh, they've read our reviews and our references and stuff. And so it just kind of depends on, on what comes in, but I don't sure. shy away from pitching those more expensive services, even to the, what you don't think might be a good fit for it or not. You have to leave it yeah. up to them. So. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it's a great point. You'd be surprised if you explain the value and you come across likable and trustworthy. Oh, that's amazing how far that can go. And it's one of the beauties of having a lower tier starting range to at least just get them in the door. Because I understand somebody who has been burnt by other web designers in the past or is leery about dropping several thousand dollars. I mean, one of the best questions you can ask yourself is when's the last time you spent five grand on something? It was probably a pretty big decision. It wasn't like right. a quick, you know, you wouldn't just have one email and sign on. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes in between there. But the cool thing is about having like a 2497 starting point is you can always say, listen, and I'm huge on this. I, a lot of my students are doing this now and having great success. It's these are the options. We can do this, but let's do it in phases. If you're not ready to do a big $10,000 type of thing yet, Phase one, we can build the foundation of the site. We can do a nice five to 10 page site for $24.97 and then get them on the maintenance plan. And then you can build the relationship, build the trust. And then slowly but surely, they can add more pages, add more functionality. And then it may take a year or longer, but then you've got your $10,000 worth yeah. of work. And then if you add more services, it can, it can skyrocket from there. So I found that to be really successful is, uh, again, I don't want to shy away from the clients who are fine with... I remember... Uh, the, at, at one point, this was probably back in 2015, the, the highest project I did back then was like 4,000 or so. And then there was a, a company here locally who was like my A++ client and they wanted to redo their backend system and be able to sell tickets to events and stuff. I knew it was going to be a lot of work, but they were an incredible client with a very robust referral network. And I just went out there and I quoted 7,500 and I thought they were going to be like, ah, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> they came back, dude. And they were like, sounds good. Let's go. And I was like, holy crap, 7,500. <laughs> um, and it was great. It was a great, it was a great project all around. So, you know, you definitely don't want to undervalue yourself, but you also need to realize like some of these businesses do have those type of budgets and 2500 may sound like a lot to you if you're used to making 20 30 40 grand but some of these businesses that are making seven figures that's nothing that's an electric bill for the month yeah yeah i'll i'll share a quick story which you know one of my first clients was um co well i don't know i'm i'm not going to throw the name out there um 
I will, I will tell you that it was a medical company and the CEO liked messing with the websites and he loved Divi. Mm. He got into a spot where he couldn't really, you know, got to where it was a little bit too technical for him. It was over his head. So he came to us and he, he asked us to just help him do fix some things on his website. Well, it was hourly, you know, so it wasn't a project. It wasn't a new website build website was already built. He needed some menu help and he needed to do some, um, some technical things with forms and stuff. And, um, so we decided to, to charge him hourly. Um, and this was, you know, back when our hourly rate was, it was probably lower than definitely lower than it is now. And, you know, he kept coming to us over and over again. And I asked him, I just said, Hey, look, you know, you're now getting into a significant spend on our hourly. Why don't you just let my team take over your website? You know, let us build out, build a new website. It's going to be less expensive than what you're doing right now. And they didn't care about that. You know, they didn't care about the amount of money that it was that we're spending. They had a goal. They had a mission they wanted to do. And that hourly client turned out to be uh, in paying us in excess of $50,000 hourly because mm. I, 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 to it me, still so much, today, yeah. I'm like, we could build you a couple of websites for, yeah, what I was going to say, you could probably do something for like 10 to 15, yeah, for, and, right. and they didn't care about that. So, one thing mm. I will tell you <clears throat> if they're okay with paying you a lot of money. Don't question it. Be okay with it. Take the money. <laughs> that's and a good keep point. Going. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, that's a good point. If they're if they're doing it, by golly. Yeah, even if it doesn't make yeah. sense on the books, by golly, especially if it's something like that where it's passive or, or not passive but recurring and ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. And they're absolutely. still they're still a client for us. And you're right. I mean, you made a good point. This company's making millions upon millions of dollars in annual revenue. Fifty, even a hundred thousand dollars is a drop in the bucket for what they're doing. You know, I mean, it's, it's literally, it's, it's, it's a very small amount of money to them, you know? So what will I pay to help increase my revenue? You know, you know, it would be, you know, I'd pay pretty, pretty good for it, you know? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, you can't, you have to have your mindset has to shift. You have to realize that, you know, these are business people are in the, they're in, they're in business to make money. You know, so if they can see the value of what you're bringing to them and, and they're making a, a ton of money and stuff already, and you're going to increase that, don't hesitate to, you know, to, to, to charge them a whole lot more. Don't think you have to stay stuck in your $5,000, $7,500, $10,000 price range. If this, if this company is making hundreds of millions of dollars a year and their website's generating a significant chunk, don't be afraid to ask for, you know, cause they understand the value of what it is that you're bringing to them. So, yeah. And it's not easy. I mean, it, it's one of those things where I think a lot of people could just easily think, well, if a company's doing seven or, you know, seven figures over, over a million, then uh, of course they'll spend 20, 30 grand on a website. Well, it's not that easy. I mean, you, right. you know, yeah. you have to add the value you have to sell, but the option is there and and that's yeah. we're getting into value based pricing instead of keeping your rates at a certain level which uh i know you and tim probably talk about this in your divi business experts course it's something that i talk about too different pricing structures and options because there's pros and cons to having like set pricing and yeah. ranges and there's also pros and cons to doing value based pricing it can be a lot more time and energy to figure that out however i mixed both uh, same thing, like you just said, David, there are some companies that, you know, it's worth more. Their website is just frankly worth more, even if it's exactly the same as a mom, Paul shop that, you know, maybe 2,500 is a stretch for them. And then there's this other company that is pulling in millions. Well, I used this back, uh, shortly before my daughter was born, my first daughter. And I will say, thank God I did this back then because, uh, it's still for in transit that the biggest project to date, which was 15,000. And uh, it wasn't an overly robust site. It, w it really ended up being great. I think the, the profit margin ended up being off. It was a lot of work, but the profit margin was great on it. And the thing was, as I recognized and I realized this company, it was an auction company that was selling properties for like millions of dollars. 
So one sale on that website, if it converted one person, that could have on the books been worth seven figures or more. Yeah. So yeah. I just went for it. I it was something I probably would have done for like five thousand. And I just said it's you know, I put up the quote out there for fifteen grand and they liked me and trusted me enough and they went through with it and it was awesome. Right. Uh, and personally it was a it was a very much needed time because it was right before we went into the NICU. So it ended up really helping us out through that. But yeah. um it just goes back to that fact that there are windows for value-based pricing. And then even if you think, you know, maybe I should just stick in this range, well, maybe to help weed people out, but I'm a big proponent of not actually showing your pricing up front on your website. I have a, a hidden page called a potential client page, and that's where I have my ranges. But if I meet an A plus plus client and I think they may have a budget for like a twenty or thirty thousand dollar website, they don't see that page. I take a whole <laughs> yeah. different approach. So right. just yeah, I think bit, yeah. I'm uh um, you know, finding clients that will spend that amount of money and stuff is really, really important. Typically small to medium sized businesses. They won't be spending that much. And that's typically, it doesn't mean they won't. It just means that they're not going to be spending some of the higher, higher paid projects and stuff. So, you know, finding businesses that generate revenue directly on their website where they're making money to where they totally understand, okay, this, this is a revenue producing machine. I need to dial it in and, and make it the best that I can make it are the types of clients that you're going to want to go after to find these higher caliber rates and stuff. Typically your brochures, point. your brochure type sites, you know, aren't really going to, you know, generate that type of, of revenue where they just need a, you know, a business and, card on the website and stuff. And what's tough about that is it's indirect. So yeah. maybe the website did convert somebody to as like a home inspector, for example, maybe they really liked the site and got to know this home inspector and then they called and set up an appointment instead of going through the contact form. Well, right. the website, you know, on paper, it didn't look like that sale came to the website, but it did. So it is a little bit harder to track. I yeah. totally agree. But that idea is huge. And, and I mentioned this in episode 42 a little while ago because I talked about how not burning bridges can help lead to bigger projects. And I, I mentioned that because we just wrapped up an e-commerce site for, for over 12 grand. And that client few years back, shuttered at a $1,500 job. She right. said, I can't spend that much. There's no way. This was for a different website of hers. And then she had a terrible experience, came back to me and said, hey, if the offer's still on the table, I'd love to move forward. We did this site for her. It was 1500 And now we just did an e-commerce site for over twelve grand. So that's just a practical example of how yeah. you can take a C to B client and through relationship and right. good work and just, you know, value and understanding the value, she understood like, okay, this e-commerce site is going to be where all my money is coming from. So I need to invest in this. Yeah. So if you're, you know, you absolutely 100% can do that, but what types of clients, you know, what types of businesses can you look for that, you know, or that may be a good target for you to, to focus on e-commerce obviously is one of them. If they're selling products online, they have the opportunity to generate revenue, especially in this time with the pandemic, everything shut down, businesses closed and stuff. E-commerce is huge. Mm -hmm. A whole lot more businesses are open to e-commerce websites today than ever <laughs> yes. before. Multi-location businesses like restaurants, um, you know, those types of things who have multi-locations, not your one place, but a multi-location restaurant typically is going to spend more money and stuff or multi-location businesses like automotive. There may be a big tire chain or something that is out there that has different, you know, so it just depends if you look for those types or a, a, a company that's getting their leads from their website. So we have a client, uh, I was going to talk about them. I, I know you're kind of wanting to know what our biggest client is that we've ever, you know, that was my next question. That was stuff. the big question of the day is what's your top project? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it was this one. Um, I said mine, I, I, I showed you yours, David, let's hear it. Or I, sh I'm, I showed you mine. I'm, I I'm, hear, yeah. I'm Grant Cardone in you and I'm 10 X in yours. <laughs> oh, nicely done. This yeah, is why I had so you on the podcast. <laughs> th this was, um, you know, this was a full blown inbound marketing campaign. So 
this was a website redesign. This was a, a um, full blown inbound marketing, you know, getting leads, you know, converting those leads and stuff. And it was $150,000 contract that we signed uh, over a one year period, um, nice. which is we agreed to, you know, content market, paid advertising, email marketing, you know, user acquisition. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a lot more than website. just a brochure or website. It's, type, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's where the big money is in web design. If you're going to go after those types of projects, you're going to really need to, you're going to really need to educate yourself, understand, you know, search engines, how they work, how to get clients paid, paid ads. And you know, the whole enchilada, email marketing, funneling, you know, sequences, the, the whole nine yards, you need to understand all of that stuff. So it goes way beyond just building a website for a customer. Um, it goes into marketing and strategies and, and all of that stuff, you know, figuring out avatars and, yeah. you know, know what the client's market is. And, and when they came to us, you know, they were an electrical and a solar company. And believe it or not, this, this, this company was in a very small town, Cottonwood, Arizona, which I don't even know what the population is, but it can't be that much. 25, 30,000 people. Maybe you wouldn't think that, you know, a customer like this would be you know spending this kind of money but this particular customer was very savvy they understood the value of online marketing and and they were already spending like a ton in direct mail you know and they knew the future they needed to do something with their web stuff so you know they were an electrical and solar company and their electrical company had been around for 40 years and you know well known generating several million dollars a year in revenue on the electrical side. And they had long, opened up a solar side of their company to offer, you know, solar installs on homes and stuff like that, you know, that was generating about 800 K a year. And they wanted to take their solar side from 800 K to 2 million a year. Well, okay. when you take, when you take a, a company from 800 K to 2 million in excess of 2 million and you're increasing their revenue, 1.2 million, you know, 10% cost to do that is a, is a good value. It's a to massive them. ROI. It's, it's a yeah. massive ROI. It's huge. What, 90%. So, yeah. Yeah. So we did that. Obviously we're, I'm a big proponent in organic, you know, I told mm -hmm. them 12 to 18 months, we can go the paid route, but I'm going to highly, we're going to mix in some paid, but I highly recommend, you know, let's go with, you know, organic content marketing. Let's start getting you established with the search engines. Let's, let's Beautiful. find out what these solar people are searching for. Let's produce some valuable content for them. And we just started writing blog posts. We redesigned their site. We funneled it. We had a mission of everything, what they wanted. And, you know, they, this year, they did better this year. We, we, we hit their goal. We took them from 800 K to, to 2 million this year and they're still a client of ours um they've been they a should be of ours. after that yeah. yeah yeah they've been a client of ours for quite a few years and and we're actually building an app for them i mean we just did a uh it'll probably end up being a, a seventy five thousand dollar side project for them uh, initially the project was quoted at fifty thousand this year not including their their web stuff this is sure. you know Something app different. development tied into their web which they wanted you know, they were paying, which is, here's a tip for you. Oh, as an entrepreneur, always be listening to your customers and stuff and try to solve problems. Obviously yes. with us being in software development and having backend developers and a development team, we can pretty much build anything. You know, I mean, it's not just plugins and themes for WordPress. Programming is programming. So this client was spending, uh, I want to say it was, some outlandish amount, like five, six thousand dollars a month on their CRM, you know, program that their mm. salespeople were out in the field and their field technicians were, you know, and that stuff is so expensive. Yeah, I've had clients huge. too that have had, yeah, that have had invested yeah. like well and, more than what I would have charged for the website yeah. and some of this and, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and they, and there wasn't, and the, and the, and the the platform wasn't even doing everything the client needs. It's a crazy yeah. thing. You know, it's like they're paying this much money and 
it doesn't do everything that they really truly need. So um, we've been building out a, a, a new software for them. You know, he decided, you know what, I'm going to invest in, it's going to cost me $75,000 out of the box, but look, I'm spending that in a year anyways, I'm going to return yeah. that money immediately. So plus, you know, um, if you can, you know, if the value is there and stuff and you see some things, um, you can, you can parlay it, you know, maybe yes. even synergy yeah. going back to synergy, use this synergy. and use it for something That's a good else. Word, yeah. Josh, you know, right? and I, I like, so that approach is for like what can happen with the ideas yeah. of the growth and the goals. And on the opposite side of that, there's another situation where a bigger quote would be for a company that wants that, but also doesn't want to lose what they have. Right. Uh, so I'm f fairly confident we're going to close on, uh, our biggest project, which will over two X what we've done. So we just did a, a proposal for 32,000 and yeah. it's actually for the company that I used to work for our tour bus, customizing, customizing shop. And I, I think I can say this, their website right now, it's okay. It doesn't look, and it's dated. It doesn't look too special. And it looks like it's maybe a 20 to 30 page site. Well, my team now, we have a very robust kind of research and, and um, SEO audit system in place now. Come to find out, they had 407 pages. Most of their SEO juice was from their portfolio pages. So what looked like might be a five to $10,000 website job was triple that because of the amount of work that's going to go yeah. into that. And it's important. This was the big thing. And this is one thing I recommend all my students and anyone listening do. Find out how much, it doesn't have to be exact, but how much traffic or leads are coming from their current website. Because in this case, I asked them that. I said, you know, we found out that there's actually over 400 pages. All of your SEO is coming from this. They told us that nearly 80% of all their leads are finding them through their portfolio pages on their website. So that is why that site is not worth 5,000. It's worth, it's actually probably worth more than, than we mentioned in this. It's a phase one type of approach. Um, but still it was equally important for the growth moving forward, but it was also really important that we don't mess up their current SEO right. rankings and we lose them sales. So, yeah, um, absolutely. just a, just another real world example of how, you know, something that looked like it could be a five to $10,000 job it definitely is worth well over, you know, triple that. Yeah. And you're going to, if you're new, you're not going to, you're going to make some mistakes. Don't be afraid to make the mistakes. Look, I made them. Our first e-commerce website, I thought my mindset was, oh, it's just installing a plugin, WooCommerce. <laughs> this is easy. I can set up a plugin. No problem. Sure. I'll do it for a couple of thousand dollars. Buddy, let me tell you, holy cow. I learned my lesson. Never again. Finish that project for the client. But yes. You know, <laughs> and, and my, my, my mindset at the time when I started researching, okay, how much does a e-commerce website cost? And, and the minimum pricing that I got back was like $10,000. And I just couldn't wrap my head around like, I can't justify charging that much. Man, yeah. that's a lot of money just to set up a plug-in. And <laughs> tell you, there's a yes, reason it's, why. It's minimums. worth every penny. You know, my my first one I did for 4000 and it was for a, a, a local uh, family like t-shirt business. And that one really did, I have to knock on wood because that one went great. It, it, it was still profitable. It was a lot of work, but I think they ended up having 50 or so products initially. The big trick was though that they were very organized. They were a great client. They got me everything I needed and they weren't picky on revisions. I just kind of did my thing. This last one we we launched the 12,000. That was a different story. That one was not as profitable. It was a ton of work and there was a lot of things that expanded. Uh, she actually ended up paying the, the original quote was for 10 and then we ended up doing uh, about 2500 more in additional work. Um, right. that was a lot of work, which is why I, uh, I had a podcast not that long ago. What episode was that? Uh, on, um, how to quote, yeah, 32 episode 32. If anyone's curious, go back and listen to my tips on quoting an e-commerce project, because <laughs> there were some invaluable things I learned that I was like, I've got to get this out to everybody to, uh, to make sure, you know, these are things that you want to include in a bigger project, but even outside of e-commerce, there are these bigger projects like the inbound stuff, like the one I just talked about with the, the business that looked like it was a fairly simple site, but in actuality had over 400 pages. That's a whole different ballgame. 
Um, and that's where, you know, it is when you're starting out, that's why I think it's good to have some of the smaller projects, the mom paws, you kind of work your way up. So when you get to these type of situations, you can handle it or you, you know, you have a good referral partners who can assist, or maybe you're at the point where you're scaling and you're building a team, um, that you can, you know, do these bigger projects. And that's one thing to remember too. David and I are talking about these higher end projects. We also have teams. So this $32,000 right. is not going all on my pocket. It's going to our team. You know, there, there's also a lot more expenses in it too. So in a lot of ways, I also don't want people to listen to this and be like, oh man, I don't want you to get discouraged thinking I'm never going to land a $150,000 project. That's all right. If you don't want to do inbound marketing and, that, and email marketing, grow a huge team, you don't have to. You can still be very profitable doing brochure Absolutely. sites as a one-man yeah. shop. I did for years. That's yeah. that's what I did. $3,500 was my sweet spot, like you talked about, David. I did website design and maintenance. If it was e-commerce, I usually got help with that or it was more, but primarily I stuck with those and it ended up being great for, for a couple of years. That was my sweet spot and I was very happy doing that. Um, yeah, I, think so I just wanted to mention that. My initial, you know, strategy when I got into web design and stuff, because like I said, I want, I'm not a technical guy, but I could, you know, I'm technical enough to where I could build WordPress websites. My strategy was productizing and, and I was going to productize websites itself, you know, and, and, and have a goal of X number of websites a month and, and set a very fixed price and focus on small businesses only. You know, because a lot of people want those higher end projects and they want to go get those big dollar ones. And I can tell you, you know, be careful what you wish for, because, you know, it's not necessarily always the best thing to do to get those yeah. higher paying clients and stuff. So and I one thing to focus to, on. One thing yeah. to consider, too, is a, a $10,000 job or, or let's say um, let's say your average is three grand for sites and you land a 15,000. Well, that's cool, but that's only one person on your maintenance plan. Whereas had you got five, it would be yeah. the same amount. But if they were simpler sites, you know, maybe there was less time involved in this big site and you're going to get five people hopefully on your maintenance plan or your service yeah, agreement, was, as David might yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, you know, I, that was kind of my goal, you know, I mean, I had read an article about productizing and this guy was like website in a day. And I, I thought my mind just like exploded. It was like, Oh, wow. You know, cause I am obviously I'm been a digital nomad, still pretty much a digital nomad. Freedom is the most important thing to me, yeah. you know, being able to determine what I want to do with my time is most important to me. You know, the money, great. I've always been pretty successful at making money. That's not been an issue for me. Um, I don't know why it's just something that I've, I've been okay at doing, you know? So what's important to me is freedom to be able to go where I want to go, do what I want to do when I want to do it and stuff. And, um, however that time, whatever that time looks like. And, um, you know, so my initial thought process was website in a day, you know, I don't care if I kill myself, you're going to get a website, $2,000. It's going to cost you 2000. That's it. You know, I guarantee you I'll have it in 24 hours or you won't have to pay a thing, you know, and it had to be a specific, you know, small business, mom and pop, you know, brochure type kind of website where I would templatize it, you know, or work, use a WordPress theme or something. And my thinking was, is okay, if I do 10 of these a month, you know, that's $20,000 a month. That's only 10 days. I guarantee it in 20. I'm off 20 days a month. Hot dang it. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> that was kind of my mindset. It always has been, you know, it's like, you know, you have to, you have to understand what your, what makes you tick and what's important to you. If it's money or time or freedom or whatever, and then kind of build and evolve your, 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 your business to help you achieve that goal and stuff. So that's just kind of give you an, and, an initial insight into what was important to me and what still is important to me today. Now, did, w did you go that route or did you find that that ended up being a nightmare getting the clients at a thousand? No, to no, no. I could have easily gone that route. You know, I didn't go that route because of Divi. Gotcha. You know, I was, you know, we started the first Facebook Divi Facebook group in uh, June of 2014 and I was member number 10 or something. Hmm. And I had met, 
you know, this, these amazing people that a lot of people know in the Divi world today, um, you know, SJ James, Corey Jenkins, um, Tim wasn't even there that early. Um, you know, Gino Quiros, you know, there were just some of those original Leslie, Divi, Leslie Bernal, yeah, Leslie Bernal. Sarah, yeah. Yeah. And well, Sarah came later as well, yeah. but, um, yeah, initially in that very first initial Gino was there. SJ was there. Uh, Dan Mossop was there. Who's hadn't been in the Divi groups in years. He does Divi booster. That was the first third party. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. okay. For, for Divi SJ James created the first second, you know, um, product for for divi ever with divi switch and our company aspen grove studios created the third which was the the, the footer editor the divi footer editor oh, okay. um, so you know i discovered that and saw the potential there and decided to focus all of my energies there as opposed yeah. to you know so our business is my 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 mindset has always been five streams of revenue I've always wanted five streams of revenue because you just never know when a pandemic's going to hit and you're not going to know you, where your money's going to come from. Yeah. You know? So why web five? Design was any one. reason, any reason? Five? It, it's just what I, it's the number that I chose. You know, we have uh, four revenue streams that we've built over time that are consistent, steady, and great. Any one of them would be, anyone would love to have any one of them. I'll tell you what they are. Um, and our fifth one is launching pretty soon. So um, client services, obviously one, building websites, design, that stuff. Service and maintenance agreements, totally separate recurring revenue, number two. Products, plugins, themes, you know, those, um, that stuff that we, we do with Divi Space and Aspen Grove Studios um, with, with our, you know, plugins and themes for Divi and WordPress as a whole. Uh, courses, fourth. And then we're launching Divi Hosting, which is a hosting company, fifth, will be yeah. our fifth stream of revenue. And each one of those are significant streams of revenue. I mean, our product side that's crushes the big, everything. Yeah. It's the yeah. big. It's it's it, you know, our plugins, themes, you know, that stuff is you just can scale that so much higher, bigger, faster, better. I mean, then than you ever could client services, than you ever could maintenance, you know, clients, you, you just scaling that is just, you know, it's not as, you know, if you have a path to scale the product side. Yeah, you can, you absolutely can. I know maintenance was the easiest to scale for me and you can scale the web services. It's just the, yeah. the, the fork of the road there is you either have like templated package style agreements right. and services where you limit a client's control. And that can be really profitable. And look at John Wooten and uh, J uh, Jay Kramer and those guys with Artillery Media. They're doing some really cool things. I'm going to get them on soon to talk about that. But there's a lot of options with that. But then there's also the higher-end client services where, yeah. to be honest, I kind of like that, doing that for years, getting those five to $75,000, $10,000 projects and working with fewer clients because I enjoyed the relationship aspect. And it was a little less, um, I did, it was quality over quantity. So I didn't right. have to hustle as much. Now there's pros and cons to both, but all that to say, there are a variety of different ways you can go about it. And again, just to reiterate, you don't, everyone listening to this, you don't have to take David's path or my path. You don't yeah. have to become a plugin creator or have that many income streams. You don't have to be a course creator like myself. Now I do have around the same amount of income streams as well. It's just a little different between my courses and affiliate marketing and now uh, passive with YouTube, which is really, really cool, which is what I'm excited to tackle next. Um, but either way, you know, you can still develop those different passive and recurring income streams in web design. You could do it right. through web design, maintenance slash service or, or care plans. You could do it through higher level like consulting and strategy and growth inbound marketing. You can do SEO organic. You don't have to worry about paid advertising because I don't, I don't do that. Right. We do yeah. all organic ongoing stuff. There's a ton of different areas for, I mean, I even did logo design and branding and a lot of that, that mixed in with web design for a while. I did photography and uh, a lot of those were like good secondary ongoing services for me. Yeah. I think, you know, I'm going to give a shout out to one of my friends, Brad Williams, uh, He's a partner and owner in Web Dev Studios. So if you want to know what you can achieve with WordPress, 
web development for clients, he primarily focuses on clients. Um, he's probably, I don't know if he is, I'm going to say he is, Brad, I'm going to say he is. He's probably the um, de facto, if you ever want to get to a place of the highest level in WordPress web design and stuff and go after the, the highest paying, cl highest caliber clients and stuff, Web Dev Studios is your is your place. I mean, okay. I think they have. I'll link that in the show notes. Yeah. yeah, Brad Williams and 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 that those guys over there, their clients are Nike, Starbucks, you know, all enterprise Fortune 500, Fortune 100 clients. Mm -hmm. WordPress gotcha. is a part of the stack that those companies are using. It's not their primary website, but they focus on you know, high level, yeah. you know, see, it's interesting though. Like and stuff. I, I personally wouldn't even want to go that route. I, right. I, I, I understand the, the hustlers who want to get there. However, I had a buddy who worked at an agency locally and, um, they did a, a half million dollar project for the zoo here in Columbus. Right. And, <laughs> you know, that sounds amazing. Half a million dollars, but do you want to even scratch the surface with the amount of work that right. went into doing that website? He told me that their agency had the highest churn. Like he didn't even have friends in the agency because they were just moving in and out and in and out and in and out. So, <laughs> I mean, that's certainly an area to go. I personally would, I, I'm more of a sustainable pace, same thing, life of freedom, call, keep calm, keep life fun and, and do it, um, you know, reasonable depending on on what you want. But again, we're we're talking about all these different options that are possible with higher paying clients. Whether it's a lower level high paying client like the ten to fifteen to twenty, or you know your type of mid range, I would consider high paying clients the six figures and on to you know these bigger companies that are doing crazy yeah. amounts. Yeah, they also do him and his partner Lisa. Um, I, I think it's Lisa. Maybe they both do it, but they write the. WordPress for dummies books and stuff. So oh, okay. gotcha. they've been, they've been around for a long time and, uh, they're a great company and stuff. So if you're, yeah. if you're looking to model after, you know, a company, because obviously we, our primary focus isn't client services anymore. It's evolved to where we are very selective and, and picky on who we want to work with and stuff. Yeah. And not everybody has that luxury and stuff. So if you want to, you know, if your goal is to get and go after those high paying enterprise level clients, you know, take a look at web dev studios, crowd favorite. Those are two of the probably uh, best known WordPress companies that focus on enterprise level, high end WordPress clients and stuff. Okay. Um, they're I've they're heard really, really favorite. good. Yeah. They're, they're in California. They're out on the West coast. Um, Oh, I can't remember um, who owns it. I, WordPress is awesome. You go to WordCamps, you meet people, and the beautiful thing about WordPress is, is you can have <laughs> these mega huge multi-million dollar company CEOs just, you know, you're kind of drinking a beer with and, and hanging yeah, out with right. and shooting the breeze. I know. That, I remember you know, I remember that uh, the the WordCamp where you and I met, David, the 17, US 17. Yeah. And uh, we're just like at a bar with Nick and Nick Roach yeah. of Elegant Themes is like the coolest, yeah. most chill dude. You know, it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. That's the wonderful thing about WordPress that I love. You know, the yeah. community is just kind of amazing. Yeah. Well, David, this has been great, man. We've covered some really good stuff. I mean, and I, I think those big questions that, that I had for you, you've answered and I appreciate you being uh, transparent with those. And it's interesting I actually feel really encouraged by this talk for people who hopefully realize you can take a variety of different paths yeah. depending on what you want to do. Uh, like yeah. for me, what I I don't know if you know this. I, I, I don't know what, when we talked a few years back at that WordCamp, I don't remember what I told you, but my whole intention was to do child themes. I was going to be right. all about child themes. Yeah. Tim, Tim <laughs> Streifler was like, I want to see you do your first child theme by the beginning of next year. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to do it. And then I realized that I had a knack and a real interest in teaching because my tutorials just started to take off. Yeah. And then my daughter was born with the NICU. You know, I, I had a lot of personal stuff going on, but that made me realize maybe now is the time I should try a course. And yeah. here we are. That's where it all changed for me. But 
you know, I, I pivoted. I realized my my path was laid out very differently. I was going to take a whole different approach. I was actually, I had toyed with the idea of starting DiviWebDesigners.com because I own that domain. I, I started the Facebook group with that name intentionally because I was going to have DiviWebDesigners.com be kind of like a Divi space place where there'd be yeah. themes, resources, tools, training, right. and stuff like that. And then I realized I love teaching. This is what I'm really good at. I don't feel like I'm working when I'm doing podcasts and teaching yeah. and courses. And uh, that's what that's where the trajectory, excuse me, the trajectory changed for me. Um, but again, how awesome is that? Like I had this whole yeah. other idea and then I realized, wow, this is actually catching on. Maybe I'll go this route and see how it goes. And I would encourage everybody to have that idea. Like yeah. have that mindset, try something, lay some plans out. Don't do them in pen, make them in pencil, try it out, see how it works out. And then you never know, you might go down an alley. I know a lot of students in my SEO course have figured out that they, they started going down an SEO route and realized they're actually really good at copywriting and they're learning right. more about sales and marketing. And um, that's opened up new doors in their businesses. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember that conversation in 2017 at WordCamp US. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, it's been, it's been awesome to watch your journey and stuff. I mean, we have our, our own journey and whatnot. And it's been, if you would have told me seven years ago when I got into WordPress that, um, you know, I would be doing what I'm doing today and stuff. I'd have said, no way. Non-technical guy. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't know how to anything about, you know, tech mm -hmm. at all is going to be creating plugins, themes, teach people through courses on how to do this type of stuff. I would have laughed you out of the building and said, no way, you know, so I, I encourage you to, you know, keep it, keep an open mind, you know, always be willing to, if you see an opportunity to walk through the door, don't be scared, meet people. WordPress is awesome. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a, it's been a great journey. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. So my son is coming in now, Josh. So, Oh, really? I awesome. I have a 24 year old son who's been kind of, you know, figuring out what do I want to do with my life? And he is committed to come to work with us for a year so that he can learn a skill. And, um, you know, so he's starting on the first of next month, August 1st. And, um, I'm really looking forward to it. He's here That's with awesome, me. He's going to be he's going to be doing some stuff. So we'll well, we're, we'll see we're, how it goes. Yeah, we're friends on Facebook. You see how many likes my uh, my girls get. So they're going to be oh, my yeah. heads heads of marketing for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, but no, man, I really appreciate that. Again, just to reiterate what I said in the outset of this, you've been a, a big mentor. Uh, we are competition in a lot of areas, but you're big on coopetition, as is our mutual friend Tim Streifler. And I love, I remember that word camp, just as a complete aside, I remember kind of wondering what you would be like in person. And you really encouraged me. You just straight up, you were like, How much did you make on your Black Friday sale? And I told you, <laughs> and you were like, Oh, you know, I, I was just getting started. And you were like, You know, you could do this and this and this. And, and you were like, you told me, you know, there's there's a ton of money you can make in this industry and you can help a lot of people. And I was like, dang, I <laughs> absolutely am going to do, you know, it really inspired me. I, I love that about you. And I love that about the Divi community because we all are empowering each other and there's plenty of room to grow and to go. Absolutely. And yeah. even if you have overlapping content, I've talked to a lot of people because we have mutual students. We have students who have been through your course and through mine. And the really cool thing about that is, while yes, we might cover the same topics in our business courses, pricing, getting content, contact collection, onboarding, offboarding, all that stuff, our experiences are different. So there's right. like two different ways you can look at it and you can pull from what you've learned, David, and what I've learned. You know, you're at a higher level with your agency and, you know, I'm at a lower level, but it's still a six figure level. And it's, right. you know, there's all these different things you can learn from different people um, with Divi and with WordPress and just the wider WordPress community. So it's awesome, yeah. man. The next, the next goal is seven figures a month. 
That's the next goal. <laughs> I don't know Very if it'll cool. happen, how long it will take, but then know. we can do this episode on your yacht and I can see the ocean in the back. Oh no, you <laughs> don't, don't, don't even that. want that. You'll just be in the woods somewhere. You'll actually yeah, look I don't like know that I'll ever have a yacht. You're, you're so gonna I'm you're gonna just... like go anti material more like the the more wealthy you become, you're just gonna end up in the woods living by yourself. <laughs> I, I am. I'm gonna, you know, that's simple. Give me the simple life and stuff, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you said it, man. It's it is all about freedom and what you want to do, and that's what I'm all about. It's not about about a money or it's not about a figure. Uh, you know, we're talking about high paying clients, but at the end of the day, you may not need super high paying clients to live the life you want to live. So, right. Uh, but it's an option. It's possible. It is very, very possible. Uh, I think you would probably echo me in saying to everyone listening, raise your rates right now. Even if you don't yeah, think you're worth it, raise oh, those rates. You made me, you made me, you reminded me, I wanted to tell you this story real quick. Oh, go for can, it. Go for it. We can leave it off here or whatever. Um, but you know, it, and raising your rates, you know, we got to a point to where, you know, we started to get a lot of referrals and stuff and we had so much work coming in that I decided, and I told Corey, my partner, I said, look, dude, I'm just going to keep raising our rates until people say no. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> and, and people came in and they were like, okay, I need this website. How much, you know, normally we would charge, you know, uh, let's just say 3,500 for it. And I said, well, I'm, I'm charging them five. Let's see if they go for it. $5,000. And they said, yeah, they went for it. next yeah. client came in, they stacked up and we, we really didn't have any time left to do it. Well, if you really want us to do it, well, it's going to cost you $10,000 to do this. And they sign on the dotted line. We got up to 4X what we normally would charge for a project. And it was, it was a, just a test to see what would happen. Because we didn't care if they said no. We had no bandwidth. You know, we had, we were going to have to hire more people to complete these projects, which that <laughs> didn't scare me, but it was like, I wanted to see what was people's threshold? Where would they say no? Oh, and, yeah. and they never said no, Josh. They never said no. You know, I got up to the four times and Corey was like, you're really going to. You're going to charge them that much? $20,000? I'm like, that's what I'm telling them, Corey. If they want it, they can, have, you know, they can come and get it, you know? And I wasn't like lying to them. I wasn't like misleading sure. them. Yeah. I wasn't like promising them the moon and the stars and the sun. I just wanted for my own knowledge, I wanted to learn how customers would react to pricing. And, and because I was free, because I had financial security, the pipeline was full, the clients were there, we weren't worried about somebody saying no. And that's really what it came down to, was yeah. I wasn't worried about someone saying no. Mm -hmm. It allowed me to test some things out. And I gotta tell you, I was blown away. I was blown away that there were customers out there that saw the value of what we were offering at four times what we had been charging for. Yeah, same here. When I went from an average of fifteen hundred to thirty five hundred and four thousand and five thousand, there's the same. They were the same clients that were paying yeah. double, triple yeah. a lot of times what I was doing. Yeah, well, know. I w I went crazy. I remember telling Tim and Corey, and I was like, "I'm charging them this," and they looked at me. They were like, "What? No way! You're not. I'm doing that's yeah. when I'm quoting them." Well, yeah. I just uh, one of my students, shout out Leo, <laughs> he just let me know on Facebook that he raised his rates by seven hundred percent just to see what would happen. No additional <laughs> services or I yeah. mean he's he's going through my courses, so he's you know getting more yeah. confident and valuing and leveling up, but he's doing like almost ten X what he was doing and people are yeah. he just landed two jobs. So uh, that's just a prime example. Sometimes it takes the experience and the bandwidth to where you don't need those lower paying clients and right. that will give you the confidence to say, listen, this is what's going to be because we, we, you're not going to tell them I don't need you, but the reality is you don't need them. So you can charge that. Yeah. Or sometimes you just need me and David to tell you, raise your rates, see what will happen. Yeah. Because I didn't raise have that. I didn't rates. have anyone telling me, you know, raise your rates and just see what will happen because it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It <laughs> also just rates. make you a better web designer. You'll have more time. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to be afraid that you're not going to make rent that month or mortgage and it's not going right. to, you know, just make life so much better. Um, right. and it only takes a couple, it only takes a couple times to do that. And then you're at a whole new level. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
Well, David, this has been great, man. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate your expertise and uh, for, again, your support and everything. Um, where can everybody find you right now? I know I'm going to link all of your sites in the show notes, but yeah. if, if anyone could, if yeah. my audience could go anywhere, where would you want them to go? If your audience could go anywhere. Um, Which is basically your audience. I think we pretty much share the same <laughs> yeah, audience. Yeah, we're but... pre pretty much the same, similar. I guess it depends on what it is that you're looking for. And I'll tell oh, you, okay. you know, I'll tell you the, the stuff. So if you're looking for WordPress knowledge and you want tips and, and, and tools on WordPress in general, I would definitely go to aspengrovestudios.com. That's where we brand our client services, our web services, and our WordPress content. So we, we have a blog on aspengrovestudios.com that focuses on WordPress, useful WordPress content, tools, tips, mm -hmm. tutorials, much like you. We have Divi.space, which is our Divi product company where we focus on, you know, all of our Divi stuff. So any, a lot of the same similar stuff you do, we, um, we have everything there on Divi space, plugins, themes, child themes, and WPGears.com is our course website. That's where Tim Streifler and I, you've mentioned him a few times. We're partners at WPGears.com. Um, you know, and that's where we, we do all of our course content. So we have business courses, technical courses, you know, um, We've got a new course that's launching, uh, how to build your first website with Divi. I know you have a, maybe a similar course. This one, it, it may be a little bit different. I'm not really sure. It's probably a little bit different. Mine is, mine is a Divi beginners course slash WordPress beginners course. So right. people who are like either brand new or want to learn Divi, it just basically it, it's just teaching people like this is the stuff you need to know to, yeah. to get going, you know, without yeah. killing yourself or being overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah, the wires is going to kill you. So <laughs> I'm just <kidding. laughs> WPGears.com. I'm, sure, I'm, sure, it will, I'm yeah. sure it'll be a little different. <laughs> yeah. So those are the three main website brands that that we have. And um, yeah. you can find me at any of them. Obviously, I'm on Facebook. I'm an older guy, so Facebook is my thing. Uh, if you want to connect with me, you know, you can find me at any one of those websites or on Facebook. And let us not forget the podcast that we met on, which oh. is Divi Chat. Yeah, Divi Chat. Yeah. Divi dot chat. You can find me there. And WP the podcast, which is, you know, a podcast. That's right. It, I was I was just thinking, I was like, I feel like there's something else that yeah. would be relevant. Tim and, and you I guys have done are a, a daily WordPress podcast for a couple of years. We're on episode like six fifty. We're in the six fifties now. You wow. know, so. and you guys are <laughs> you just started it back up, right? Because I know there was a break. We for did a little recently while. started it back up and uh it's been fun. It's been good to to get back into the groove of things and stuff. So no doubt, no doubt. Awesome, David. Well, I will link all that in the show notes for sure. Thanks again for your time and man, man. looking forward to doing this again. I'm sure we've got a ton of different things we can talk about here moving forward. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Josh. It's been great. All right. Cheers, man. Hey guys and gals just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts and search this episode number and you'll find all the links, descriptions and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.